my tip of the day that I wanted to talk about was picking the right yarn for the right pattern. And specifically, when you have a, a wild variegated yarn, you want a plain pattern. This is, both of these are just stockinette stitch. And you're letting the yarn do all the work for you. Um, if you use this yarn and say that you wanted to make um, a hat that had cables on it, it would be really hard to see the cables and, it, and also the cables would break up the color of the yarn. So the tip is, if you have a really wild variegated yarn, do a very, very, very plain pattern. Um, do something in stockinette, do something in garter, and let the yarn make the pattern. Okay, that's the tip. And this is what I use a lot all the time um, when I am doing something like this, when I'm making a hat or I'm making mitts, um, or if I'm investigating making a, a pretty simple sweater and I don't want to go through Ravelry and look at 3,000 million patterns, right? So I had, this book is my, one of my go-to books. It's The Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns by Ann Budd. I love this book. So it has, it has gloves, hats, mittens, sweaters, um, socks, vests, and looks like they have, and some, and some scarves. Basically what this is, um, let me, uh, let me go to my page about hats. So basically it gives you a formula. So there are all these different sizes here. And then you have the different gauges that you're getting. How many stitches per inch are you getting? And it and then this handy table here tells you how many to cast it on. And then it gives you all the different instructions. You know, over here it talks about how to do the, the decreases to get a nice top. So I love this because I can take any, especially if you're using a farm yarn from somebody, from me or from somebody else, that may be a little bit different. Um, or maybe you're somebody that knits really, really tightly, or you're somebody that knits really, really um, loosely. And you know, you are always having to change the patterns that you're working on. Um, this does such a good job because you find you find what's your gauge what's your size and here's how you make it cool right um i also whenever i'm making socks and most of the time with the socks that i make are going to be um just your plain just your plain vanilla socks right and so it has the same thing um and especially when i get to the part about turning the heel I went the wrong way because I was looking at the, when it gets to the part about the heel flap you see how much I've used it because I've highlighted the things like this is this is what I'm using um and it's so when you're doing the heel flap or when you're turning the heel it tells you exactly how to do that um in this handy dandy book so if you don't have this book I really think that you should get one it's great to have in your um, collection because you can make anything with this um, she also has she has she's written a lot of books but the other one that I have is the knitters handy book handy book of top-down sweaters so this one is really cool too because she has in there she basically um, categorizes them by the kind of sleeve that they have if it's a seamless yoke like the last what um like my um uh, my yellow one that i did that i steaked um if it has a raglan sleeve if it has a set in sleeve if it has shoulder saddles 
um, or saddle, sh saddle shoulders. Um, and basically it does the same thing. Um, this one is a little bit more complex because, you know, sweaters are more complex. So she has children's sizes and then adult sizes. So she has the, the sizes. Then she ha you, you find your gauge in here and it tells you how many to cast on. And then it goes through all the instructions to make, this one is a raglan sleeve sweater. Um, so then she also, which is a little bit different than the other book, she also gives you a specific pattern. So if you are somebody that likes to, um, you know, no, this is exactly what I want to make. Then she has that pattern in here for you as well. So this one has the generic patterns plus some specific patterns for you to make. So again, great, great book. So again, great to have in your collection if you like to do sweaters. And you know, she's got, she's got pullovers in here. She's got cardigans in here. And I don't know that she does anything with steaking. Um, I'll check real quick. She does not have to do anything with steaking in here. So those are my tips. Two great books. If you don't like to do sweaters, don't go get this one. I specifically like top-down sweaters because you can try them on as you are making them. And so you can check the size and you can tweak it if you need to uh, without having to like redo your whole sweater. You know, if you're doing one of those sweaters where it's all in pieces and it doesn't quite work out, what are you going to do, right? This way you can um, try it on. So that's that one. But this one, everybody needs to have this one in their, um, in their collection. The Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns that has sweaters, hats, gloves, mitts, socks, and vests, and some scarves in there as well. So anything that you would want to make basically is in this book. And all you have to do is knit a swatch with the yarn that you want to use, and you can find all the directions to do it. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this. And just to recap, when you have a wildly variegated yarn, do a plain pattern. Let the yarn do the work for you. If you have a semi-solid yarn, if you have a semi-solid yarn, you probably then want to do some more comp something that's more complex. Put some cables in it. Do something with um, lace. Do a shawl that has, you know, some lace in it even if it's a, a worsted weight. You, you, want, you want to have interesting complex stitches when you have a semi-solid kind of yarn. And you want to have a very simple, plain pattern when you have a wildly variegated yarn.